Over the past months, we've heard so many athletes step up and speak out about social issues. Serena Williams is the latest to weigh in on racial relations with the police in the United States, taking a Facebook to share a personal story and saying she won't be silent. Let me share it with you. Today I asked my 18-year-old nephew, to be clear, he's black, to drive me to my meeting so I can work on my phone, hashtag safety first. In the distance, I saw a cop on the side of the road. I quickly checked to see if he was obliging by the speed limit. Then I remembered that horrible video of the woman in the car when a cop shot her boyfriend. All of this went through my mind in a matter of seconds. I even regretted not driving myself. I would never forgive myself if something happened to my nephew. He's so innocent, and so were all the others. I am a total believer that not everyone is bad. It is just the ones that are ignorant, afraid, uneducated, and insensitive that is affecting millions and millions of lives. Why did I have to think about this in 2016? Have we not gone through enough, opened so many doors, impacted billions of lives, but I realized we must stride on, for it's not how far we've come, but how much further still we have to go. I then wondered, have I spoken up? I had to look at me. What about my nephews? What if I have a son, and what about my daughters? As Dr. Martin Luther King said, there comes a time when silence is betrayal. I won't be silent. Serena so powerful. Stephen A., what was your reaction when you read this? I was very proud of her, but far from surprised. I want to go on the record by saying this. Martina Navratilova, Steffi Graf, and so many other great ones, nothing but respect and admiration for their greatness that they put forth on the tennis court. Uh, Billie Jean King, along with Ma uh, Navrat uh, Navratilova and others, and the issues that they have taken on and they embraced as their own and the, being the conscientious observers that they were, they deserve our, our respect and our praise. But Serena Williams is the greatest female tennis player ever. There is no question in my mind about that. And I say that not just because of her exploits on the tennis court and how she's an international phenom because of all the things, or an icon rather, because of all the things that she's accomplished. But I don't recall anybody in the history of any sport that has had to go through all that she went through. You gotta remember that with Muhammad Ali, I'm talking about his refusal to enter the armed services and the fight in the Vietnam War, his blackness being associated with the Nation of Islam, et cetera, and how that riled up and exacerbated already tense situations in the post-civil rights era. With Serena Williams, it's far more than that. One month is her blackness. Another minute, it's her body. Another minute, it's her clothes. Another minute, it's her language. Another minute, it's her celebration. I mean, you even had somebody from Russia call them her and her wonderful sister Venus. You even had somebody call them the Williams brothers one time. Just so incredibly disrespectful. And by the way, the, she's been into, in, in disrespected in Australia. She's been disrespected in, by uh, Russian. She's been disrespected, uh, you know, in Germany, okay, years ago when they talked about her physique. You know what I'm saying? And I'm here to tell you, that speaking to, for the, on behalf of the brothers, we have no problem with, the, uh, with Serena Williams' physique. I'm just, I just need to say that because the people, the people, people like that are complaining physique. about it, I'm wondering what's wrong with them. A lot of people but are buying her the, body parts. The, the, the fellas don't mind. Let me just put right. it that way, okay? Cosign. So, so all of that being said, let's be clear. This woman has been vilified. She has been excoriated on a multitude of levels. Her parents have been insulted. Her sibling has been insulted. And everything you could possibly imagine about her as a human being has been insulted. And yet somehow, some way, she goes out. In most instances, she performs on an elite level. And in most instances, she's ex displayed a level of poise in the eyes of adversity unlike any athlete I have ever seen. So when she comes out and she says her voice will not be silent here at home, I can think of no professional athlete in America right now more qualified to say what she said 
and mean it, and not a damn soul should have anything so negative right. to say about it. I want to start there. I'm interested to hear what you say, have to say about yes, this. Yes, so am I, Molly. I mean, yes. I want to start with the athlete of it all, mm -hmm. that she quotes Martin Luther King at the end, and even the presentation of I won't be silent. I loved it. It was like emotional. What are the athletes going to do with their platforms? And she said, oh, I'm going to use mine, lending her voice to it. I think that is important, in it, and it, she, it was just beautifully composed, not just written, but even the way she formatted it had ma landed with maximum impact, on me at least. And so to say proud, not to sound patronizing, but that's also the way I felt. I, I don't know, I, you know, it was emotional. Then the question is, what does her voice specifically lend? And I think there's a gender component to all of this. I'm reminded of A Time to Kill, the movie, with Sam Jackson yep. and, and Matthew McConaughey. Yep. And Matthew McConaughey's this lawyer, and he's trying to get Sam Jackson out, uh, off the hook for a revenge killing, mm -hmm. that, that for which Sam Jackson is they standing brutally trial. raped his daughter. They, right, there's a heinous gotcha. crime against his against a family member, his daughter. Yes. And and Sam Jackson finally tells him in the in the scene leading up to the final trial scene, um, look, you're, you're laying out all the facts and everything. You're doing a great job. Uh, this is an all white jury, as I recall. And it was uh, you need to hit them in the heart, basically. You need to convince them, not in their heads, in their hearts. So McConaughey says, I want everyone to close their eyes. He tells the jury in his closing comments. And he takes them through this heinous crime scene. Yep, I remember. And, every, and, and you're like, wow, that's really terrible. But you could see, but I don't think this is going to work. And then at the very last moment, he says, now imagine that the victim was white. And all the jury's eyes pop open. The reason I bring that, like, oh, my God, and Sam Jackson is yes. acquitted. Um, because he, McConaughey in that scene, the character forced them to empathize, really empathize. Not look at them as the other, because Sam Jackson and his daughter were black, but empathize with them as human beings. And the effect I ha think Serena can have here, as a woman, now she's talking about her nephew, it's not like it's her son, but it is a, it is, there, there is an analogous relationship yeah. in ways there, and I think it can help people realize, wait a minute, if you're a mother, and your teenage son is driving you, and you are black. These are the kind of thoughts you have to have. I think this will resonate with people differently because of that, and she therefore has an additional kind of power and influence for her voice. So the I will not be silent, incredibly important here by Serena Williams. Molly. And, and I loved also what you guys alluded to, the fact that she wasn't just pointing figures, then she pointed it back at herself and said, what am I doing? And to what you spoke to, Stephen A., I played tennis. I was probably the darkest person I ever played, you know, played against, so we know what that says. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in her sport, where she came from, from Compton, and that specific sport of, of, of tennis and kind of the culture, and just every part of her being attacked, and, and they tried to break her down. So in terms of a role model for a woman, she's so powerful, because it was everything about her, her family, dress the way you want to uh, she continued to win and continues to win and I think the other part that you mentioned that was so strong is that if anybody can speak to this and dealing with that kind of adversity in this modern era it's Serena and and I just loved it was so articulate how she wrote it and, and connected it to her family and as somebody that doesn't have kids yet but has a lot of nieces and nephews I get what you know what she's saying it's the closest to her and wanting to protect them and having that eye-opening moment that really scared her and I think someone to kind of step up and help lead the charge and especially the female voice there, there's nobody better she's she's been incredibly composed as a black person mm -hmm. I'm telling you she's dealt with stuff most of us cannot take and somehow some way she's been so poised so for her to write what she mm -hmm. wrote to sit down and mm -hmm. put those thoughts on in writing it shows you how deep this is hitting her no one's more qualified than her to and, speak and about she's it. still winning and she's still phenomenal. defying she's the odds the best Ever, ever. In the most competitive female sport, in fact, no that's question. where worldwide no question. female talent, at least, uh, has been funneled mm -hmm. for we various reasons over the decades. We actually have not revered her enough. Agreed. She deserves better from us. Agreed. A little less than three months after being traded from the Bulls to the Knicks, Derrick Rose took part in his first practice with his new team. After the practice, he was asked what his role on the team will be. He said, my job is to come here and help Carmelo Anthony win. This is his team in practice to push him, be on him. When I see that he's being lazy or something like that and it's vice versa, he's going to be on me when he needs to push me. It's no bad blood. I'm just here to help him win. Westgate has the Knicks winning 40 and a half games this season. Max, I want to start with you. 
Yep. How will the Knicks fare this season? I'm taking the under on 40 and a half games. I know they're in a weaker conference. I mean, um, certainly at the top level, there aren't a bunch of top level teams like there is in the West. I suppose in the West, there's one top level team followed by a bunch of other level teams. But um, and the Knicks have an excellent starting five. I look at the starting five. Derrick Rose, another year away from catastrophic injury, uh, um, has to think more like a pure point guard. I'm playing on a team with Carmelo. I love the Courtney Lee signing, maybe not three years from now, but right now doesn't need the ball threes and Ds, all that. Carmelo's still excellent. Porzingis should take a step forward, really good. Joe Kim Noah, when he's on the floor and in the locker room, will be a positive influence. But they're a very thin team. They really don't have a bench, Stephen A. And, even, and, and that's significant for them because given, like, the reason Derrick Rose and Joe Kim Noah are Knicks now instead of Chicago Bulls is because of their injury history. If they weren't injury prone, they wouldn't be on the Knicks right now. That's two guys. Porzingis at seven foot three. You always have to worry about that, particularly, you know, in the second and third year. How is his body going to respond to long grinding, grueling NBA seasons? Really tall guys like that. The Lakers' philosophy has always been. They dominate the big man market, but they wait. Someone else drafts them. They wait, see who through attrition still standing. Then they go after that guy. Porzingis, the Knicks are going to have to see if he can stand up to it. Um, and Carmelo's in decline. I mean, he's still an excellent player, but he's not what he was a couple of years ago. So the starting five has injury issues. They're not all in their primes together, and they got no bench. My heart says, boy, that starting five, if everything works out just right, and Hornacek's the kind of guy who's shown he can work with what he's got. The, no matter what it is, he can, he can make, you know, lemonade out of lemons, and these are better than lemons. My heart says, boy, they can go way over. But my head says the reality is, if you're asking me 45 and a half games over under, I'll take the under on the Knicks. I would say to you, I would take 45, 45. 40 would, and a half games. I would say to you, I'm taking over. I think the Knicks will win about 45 games this year. That's what I've got them because I think in the game of basketball, the way the game is called, mm -hmm. the absence of physicality compared to what used to exist back in the day, I think that helps a team that's relatively thin. That's number one. Number two, to answer the question directly, I love Derrick Rose's approach because that's where I'm going with this. Look. Carmelo Anthony, I came on national television and apologized because I hadn't spoken to him during the Olympics, and I took that quote about, you know, the gold medal being more important. That, that's my man. We communi we've communicated. I had access to him. I should have called him first before I said that. But it does not change where I stand. Carmelo Anthony, I consider to be one of the top offensive players of this generation. And if you have the supplementary parts around him that can do, it's not that Derrick Rose, but you got a quality reserve in Brandon Jennings coming off the bench, okay? Off a knee I'm surgery, too. I'm looking at the Edmondson, the Edmondsons, rather, the, the, the Lance Thomases of the world, people like that that can come off the bench to spell for these guys. So when I make a prediction, I'm assuming guys are going to be healthy because obviously they get hurt. It's not going to do with it. If Porzingis and Derrick Rose are healthy, you got three scorers, not just one. Joe Kim Noah and Energizer Bunny who can defend and rebound. Courtney Lee, who's that guy that can fill in various parts because he's a legit 6'4", can play the off-guard position, etc. The reason why I love what Derrick Rose had to say is because my position about Carmelo Anthony has not changed. I am sick and tired of a guy that I consider to be one of the top offensive players of this generation, either being home watching the playoffs like me or going in the first round. It is no longer acceptable. The honeymoon is over. This guy is a superstar offensive player. Not a superstar all-around player because we know Carmelo Anthony's not great defensively, but offensively at 6'8", who can score anywhere The honeymoon from anywhere. is over. The, the marriage has been over. He's done a second marriage, no, no, a third talking, marriage already. I'm talking about the Knicks. I'm talking about his time with the Knicks. Enough is enough. I love what Derrick Rose has said because what Derrick Rose essentially is saying on behalf of the rest of the Knicks is that if we do our job, we got the dude to give the ball to to take us there. So what I'm, what I'm expecting from Carmelo Anthony is that the New York Knicks have other guys that are doing their jobs. And it's tight. And the fourth quarter comes. And Max, Derrick Rose, and Joe Kim Noah, and Courtney Lee and those boys say, here you go. What you gonna do? You and, I, and I expect Carmelo Anthony to step up and do it. Anything you're a Knicks less fan. than a, Of course I am. Okay, if you're a Knicks fan, you should be hoping that by the end of the season, Carmelo's not even the best player on the team. No, no, no. You gotta be hoping that Porzingis is better than Carmelo by the no, end no, no, of the season. I don't need that, because he's a second-year player. I'm not gonna ask asking for too much. I don't give a damn how good he is. Carmelo Anthony is one of the top offensive players of this generation, and my expectation is what it is. I ain't apologizing for it to nobody. The New York Knicks 
should get to the semifinals if Melo is Melo and the other yeah. players and they're up. not hurt and guys yeah, with no, injury no, no, histories no, 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 don't get and hurt. You, I'm, I'm, not you. I'm with you. We'll all I'm, be no, no, I'm with Max if yeah. they get injured. I'm, I'm only talking if they're healthy. We got to go to break. Hope I they need stay this. healthy. I want to see this. Molly, I'm hurting. I'm next. tired of the Knicks. I'm just tired of the Knicks. you another gold medal. That's comfortable. Carmelo's going to get another gold medal to make it up to you. We're going to break.